Hi and welcome to the second business analysis tutorial session. Uh, following on from the last session, we discussed what is business analysis and what a business analysis does. And we talked a little bit about the six stage framework of the business knowledge, uh, business analysis knowledge areas as pertained by the BA Bock framework, which is the business analyst body of knowledge. So this second session is going to focus purely on the first of those knowledge areas, which is enterprise analysis. This particular knowledge area describes the business analysis activities necessary to identify a business need, a problem, or an opportunity, define the nature of a solution that meets that particular need, and justify the investment necessary to deliver that solution. Enterprise analysis is often the starting point for initiating a new project and is continued as changes occur and more information becomes available over the life of the project. An important note is it's through enterprise analysis activities that business requirements are identified and documented. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about what describes business analysis activities. It seeks to analyze the business situation to fully understand the problems and opportunities, to also assess the capabilities of the enterprise in order to understand the changes needed to meet the needs and achieve strategic goals of the organization. It helps to define the solution scope, being the work that's required in terms of the requirements deliverable to meet a solution, of the business case for a proposed solution, and to define the document business requirements. This includes the business need, requirement capabilities, the solution scope, as just mentioned, and the business case. The enterprise analysis is broken down into five uh, sequential areas. They are to define the business need, and from there to assess the capability gaps, i.e. where you are, where you want to get to, and where the gaps will um, stop you from getting there. It also looks to determine a solution approach. It also looks to define the solution scope. That is the total requirements that are be to, to, uh, to be delivered and the work involved. Lastly, it then seeks to define the business case, which is when we weigh up the costs versus benefits and decide whether to go ahead or not with the project. So first of all, let's look at define business need. This is to identify and define why a change to an organization's systems and capabilities is required. The way the business need is defined will determine which alternative solutions will be considered, which stakeholder will be consulted, stakeholders will be consulted, and which solution approaches will be evaluated. New business needs can be generated in several different ways. The approaches are from the top down, from the bottom up, from middle management, or from external drivers, i.e. driven by customer demand or business competition in the marketplace. The main consideration points that have to be taken into account is what are the business goals and objectives, what are the business problems or opportunities, and what is the desired outcome. A business analyst employs uh, a myriad of different techniques to achieving these outcomes. That includes benchmarking against other departments or other organizations in the industry, brainstorming sessions, business rules analysis, and that's analyzing the business rules of the company to see what actually works for the organization and what doesn't, focus groups internally or externally of external stakeholders, Functional decomposition, where we break down uh, the processes and departments and look at the methodologies, if they're actually working for the desired outcome. And the root cause analysis, where we're looking at where the current problem can be traced back to its origin. The output of this section is the business need. The second category is assess capability gaps, which is identifying new capabilities required by the enterprise to meet the business need. The consideration points of this is, is firstly, the current capability analysis. This looks to, uh, the, the goals is to understand the organization's business, 
and how the business and technology architecture are supporting the business. Secondly, assessment of new capability requirements. I'll come to that in more detail in a moment on the next slide. And thirdly, assumptions. The assumptions will often be difficult or impossible to prove that the delivery of a new capability will meet a business need, even if cases where it appears reasonable to assume that the new capability will have the desired effect. These assumptions must be defined and obviously understood. Now let's go back to the second point. We're talking about an assessment of new capability requirements. This means a comparison of the current and desired future, future states of the organisation. And it will identify gaps in organizational capabilities that need to be filled to support the business vision, strategy, goals, and objectives. Some examples of capabilities include business processes, features of software, tasks that an end user may perform, events that a solution must be able to respond to immediately, products that an organization creates, services that it delivers, and goals that a solution will allow stakeholders to accomplish. The techniques that are used for, by business analysts to achieve this category is document analysis and SWOT analysis, being strengths and weaknesses internally and opportunities and threats which are external to the organisation and how those weaknesses and threats can also be mitigated into strengths and opportunities. The outcome of this exercise is the required capabilities. The third category determines solution approach. This general approach that will be taken to create or, rec or acquire the new capabilities required to meet the business need. Some approaches include to utilize additional capabilities or existing software or hardware, purchase or lease of software or hardware from a supplier, design and develop custom software, add re resources to the business or make organizational changes, or change the business procedures and processes via process and procedure engineering or re-engineering. The consideration elements include alternative generation, that is to identify as many potential options as possible to meet the business objectives, and for the identified gaps in capabilities, including, of course, the option of doing nothing anyway. We'll also look at assumptions and constraints, and ranking and selection of approaches. The business analyst will employ the following techniques. Firstly, general techniques including benchmarking, and brainstorming, decision analysis, estimation and SWOT analysis. Again, second category is feasibility analysis, which is formal analysis for larger organizations, whereas the BA handles solely for smaller organizations. The outcome of this third section is to give the solution approach. The fourth category is to define the solution scope. Now, there's always ambiguity of what is scope. In project management, scope means the total sum of work to be involved to produce a deliverable or deliverables. In business analysis, it basically means the scope is the total number of requirements that are to be delivered to deliver a solution to the business need. So the purpose of this task is to conceptualize the recommended solution in enough detail to enable stakeholders to understand which new business capabilities an initiative will deliver. So the solution scope includes the scope of analysis, that being the organizational unit or process for which the requirements are being developed, developed which provides the context in which the solution is implemented. The capabilities supported by solution components such as business processes, organizational units and software applications. The capabilities to be supported by each release or iteration of a project. Remember, a software project will not just be released in one go. There will be different phases and different releases for review. And lastly, the enabling capabilities that are required in order for the organization to develop the capabilities required to meet the business need. The consideration points is the solution scope definition, which is the major features and functions that are to be included in the interactions the solution will have with systems and people outside of its scope. And that is including in scope and out scope components of the solution. In scope usually means a direct composites, out of scope usually means supporting. Or not to be required. Two, the implementation approach 
which describes the solution approach will deliver the solution scope, e.g. if the solution approach involves partitioning the proposed entire project into releases once again. Thirdly, dependencies. Define major business and technical dependencies that will impose constraints to their effort to deploy a solution, including dependencies that may exist between solution components. Techniques. The general techniques is functional decomposition, as we already discussed. Interface analysis, this being the scope of work required to integrate the new solution into the business and technical environments. Scope modeling, identify appropriate boundaries for the solution scope and user stories being usually of historical information in the organization that can benefit a project. The second category is problem or vision statement, which is basically stating what the problem is and what the vision is in terms of where they're coming from and where they're going to. The output of this section is the solution scope. Lastly, define business case. Defined business case involves justifying the investment required to deliver a proposed solution, i.e. cost versus benefit. The business case describes this justification and may expand into qualitative, quantitative, profit expectations and break-even points. Profit expectations usually is in the form of ROI or return on investment. This really is a framework to see how the initiative will achieve business objectives. So the consideration points is looking at benefits, costs, risk assessments, and result management, i.e. key performance indicators. The techniques are decision analysis, estimation, metrics and key performance indicators, as mentioned, risk analysis, SWOT analysis, our old friend once again, and VESMA assessment. That it usually is in the form of RFPs and RFQs, being requests for proposals and requests for consultations from third party vendors to perform the work at hand for the project. The output of this last section of enterprise analysis is the business case, which presents the information necessary to support go or no go decisions to invest and move forward with a proposed project. I hope this has been informative and it sets up for our next tutorial, which will be on business analysis, planning and monitoring. My name is Adam and thank you.